What's going on guys? So today we're going to take a look at a very popular Garmin watch and that's the Garmin 245 with music. And I'm going to ask the question, is this still a good watch to buy in 2021? <laughs> Alright guys, so Garmin did send over this watch for me to do a review, but we had no prior agreement whether I should do a positive or negative review. This is my own thoughts on this product. And if you guys don't know about Garmin, Garmin is pretty much the most popular running watch. At least for me, I know. I know the old Garmin Forerunner that I got a long time ago was one that everybody was wearing, and that's how most runners got introduced into wearing GPS watches. It was that big old brick one where you held it up in the air to try to get your GPS signal and uh, it was a beast. It lasted for a long time. But Garmin has come a long way. Garmin now has smart features. It has music. It has everything. A lot of other watches that I review, people will always ask for the features that Garmin has. And Garmin has made a good mixture of a smart watch, a fitness watch, a fitness checking watch, they combine all those things together to make a pretty good set of watches. And this is the Forerunner series. The Forerunner series is meant for runners. So it has a lot of running metrics on it and a lot of things that are geared towards runners. And we're gonna talk all about that. And I'm gonna tell you if this is still a good watch to buy in 2021, and just as a spoiler alert, it is. All right, so let's take a look at this Garmin Forerunner 245 with music. There are, there are two versions of this watch. There is a non-music version and a music version, but we'll talk all about that in a little bit. First, we're gonna talk about the looks of it. So here is the watch right here. It is a good looking watch. I do like circular watch designs for my running watches. I know that Garmin did make a Forerunner 35 that was more square looking and they do make the venue also that square. I like the round form factor of this one. And this one is a 42.3 by 42.3 by 12.2 millimeter watch. So it's not the hugest watch out there. There are definitely bigger watches out on the market and my preference is for bigger watches, but you know, the more that I've worn this on my wrist, the more I think that it looks better. So while I would prefer a bigger watch on my wrist, this one, you know, for the size of it, it's comfortable, it fits well, and I think it looks good still, even if it is a little bit smaller. All right, so let's talk about the screen. The screen is covered by a Corning Gorilla Glass 3, which will help prevent it from getting scratched, but they still do end up getting scratches, especially if you are working on something like a car, a lawnmower, or anything where you may scrape it against something, they will get scratched. So it's always a good idea to get some kind of lens protector on it. So uh, while this is a Corning Gorilla Glass, it's not Sapphire. Sapphire is gonna be the best kind of lens that you're gonna want on your watch. So the display on this is a 1.2 inch display. And that may seem like it might be small, but I think 1.2 inch is pretty standard across the board for a lot of watches. Even some of the bigger watches will have a 1.2 inch display, but they will have a bigger bezel. So it will look like a bigger watch, but the display will be the same size. So speaking of display, the display is a sunlight visible transreflective memory in pixels. So basically what happens with this thing is that if sunlight hits it, it actually will reflect that sunlight better. So you can see everything a lot better, especially when it is sunny. So if you're running outside, the sun hits it, you're gonna be able to see the display just fine. And then that memory in pixel, that means like, so you see the zero six, it's not changing a lot. So basically, it will keep that in the memory for 06 and it will turn off that pixel or something like that. But basically it will make your battery last longer. So that's what that memory in pixel means. All right, so this is the display. We'll talk about the buttons on the side. So you do have the three buttons on the left and two buttons on the right. The button on the top left is the light. So the, that'll turn on the backlight over here. It'll help you to see in dark situations. Uh, this middle button is the up button. So if you wanna toggle the menu up, you go up or the bottom right is gonna go down. So you can see right there, it's down. And then over here on the right side, uh, the bottom right is gonna be the back button. So like you can see, I was here toggling through the menus. I can go back and go back to the main screen over here. And then this top right button is what's gonna start your workout. You just have to pick what workout you wanna do and then start it and stop it as well. This will also have a lap feature. So this, this back button also works during a workout. It will work as a lap function. So you do have manual lap functions on your watch. All right, so let's go to the back of it. So the back of it you can see here is the heart rate monitor. It also has pulse aux in it. Uh, 
It does have a little bit of a bump, but for me, I've been wearing it. This is one of the more comfortable watches that I've worn. I have had no issues with it, especially because it is smaller and it is light. The weight of this is at 38.5 grams. So really small form factor and pretty light on your wrist. I'm a big guy, so the weight really doesn't really bug me on my wrist at all. Uh, nice little small watch. And then we go into the strap. The strap is a silicone and it's pretty stretchy. If you guys can see that, pretty stretchy. So it does fit really well onto your wrist. With that stretch, you can make it a lot more, you know, tighter around there and where it's not too tight and it will stretch. And you want to have it pretty tight on your wrist and a little bit above your wrist bone over here. That way the heart rate monitor can read more accurately on your wrist. Okay, so what is the battery life on this watch? The battery life on this watch is up to seven days on smartwatch mode. So that means if you are only using it as a smartwatch, it'll only have seven days of battery life. If you use GPS with music, so if you're running and you wanna to listen to music, it'll go up to six hours. So that'll last you through most marathons and some 50Ks. Uh, and then if you wanna have GPS without the music, this will last you for 24 hours. So that will last you to a 50 miler to 100K, 100 miler for some people may be able to do it, but for me, it won't last me for 100 miler for sure if I try to do that. So uh, it does have a pretty good battery life. I wish that it was a little bit longer, but they do have other watches that will last longer for you. So this is definitely for somebody who is doing marathon training all the way up to probably 100K. And the last thing, this is a waterproof watch so you can go down to five atmospheres. I probably wouldn't dive with it. Not made for diving, but definitely if you wanna do triathlons or swim in the swimming pool. If you wanna take a shower with it, it'll work just fine. So, all right, so let's take a look at some of the menus. So we'll take a look at the menu. If you hold down this middle button, which is the up button, if you hold that down, you'll get to this menu, which you could change your watch faces. The good thing about Garmin watches is that it does have a pretty robust app store. So there's a lot of developers out there making a ton of apps for it, making a ton of watch faces. So you can go into the app store that Garmin has and pick whatever customizable watch face that you want. There's a ton of them out there. Just, this is just a few of them that you'll see over here. I didn't really download any new ones, but these are all the different ones that you could have that I have so far. Of course, you can add as many as you want. So let's go to the next screen. This, it does have an alarm clock, so this will buzz. And this watch also does beep. So some watches, they don't beep. I know the Vivo Active 4, Vivo Active 3, they don't beep. And that was one thing that I was really missing. And this watch does beep. It may sound like a little thing to you, but I do like beeping, especially when I'm running. Sometimes I don't feel that vibration when it goes to a new lap or a new mile. And then if you press the lower left button over here, this will get you to your music shortcut. So you can have music on this watch and it will drain your battery. And there's also a non-music version on this. But with the music, if you have a streaming service such as Amazon or Spotify, it does have to be the paid versions of those apps. You can download that music into your watch. You don't have to run with your phone. You can just use it with that. I've used them with my Jaybird Vistas. Early on when I had them, they, they didn't work as well. But now that I've been using it, it's been working fine for me. I've ran two or three times with no issues with my Jaybird Vistas and my watch. So you can have a lot of different music. You basically just have to pick the playlist that you want and download it. And then you can listen to whatever song you want. All right, so let's take a look at all the menus over here if you just toggle up and down. So the first screen over here is the time. It's gonna tell you the time, the battery life, uh, if it's connected to your phone, and the date. So if you go down, this is gonna be your training load status right now. Uh, I, I have been wearing it, but I've been testing a lot of other watches too. But this would tell you if you are trained, if you're well-trained, under-trained, over-training, uh, stuff like that. So that's that's what this one is. And then if we go down one more, this can tell you all your health stats. It's gonna give you your heart rate, your stress levels, your body battery, and then finally your respiration rate. So right now it's saying, although it's not connected to me, it's saying I have 67 beats per minute. I have 37 stress. 30% uh, battery charge and 14 breaths per minute. So you can also go further into each of those if you click on this over here. So there you go. The next thing we have we press down is gonna be your daily stats. So right now it's telling me I've been active for 106 minutes. I took 130 steps. I haven't been wearing this watch too much today. And then 1,939 fire. I'm not really sure what that one is, but I'm assuming it's my activity. And then let's go here. This is going to be my SPO2. So if I put it on my wrist right now, we could get my SPO2. So right there, it says my pulse ox is 
93%. I have noticed that with this on your wrist, it's not the greatest, but if you put it on your finger, it'll be a little bit more accurate because 93% is actually pretty low. You probably would want to have it at 96%. But uh, on your wrist, it's not as accurate, but just know you don't have to go to the hospital if it is at 92%, 93%. You probably are fine. Test it on your finger and it'll probably be a little bit higher. All right, the next thing we'll see is your little notifications. So you can see I have a few notifications over here. My brother and my friend texted me and then I have an email. The notifications on this watch, I like them. I've had had different GPS watches from other companies and some of those notifications will give you notifications for every little thing and it's just and it just gets annoying like if I get a phone call my wrist will buzz if, if I listen to a different song my phone will buzz but with this Garmin has it right to where it's just the notifications you want and nothing that you really don't want because I don't like to have my wrist buzzing all the time and you can turn them off but you can't select which notifications you want on or off so it's either all of them on or all of them off but the ones that it does select for you I think it works perfectly I, I like all my notifications on there uh, so if I wanted to respond to Willie and Romero over here, if you see over there, I could uh, dismiss it, I can like it, I can reply. And the replies are basically pre-selected replies that you can put on there. You can actually edit them and put whatever you want, but you see right in there, I have, sorry, I can't talk right now, on my way, okay, yes, no, out running, working out, out riding, no thanks, thanks, and love you. So there's a pretty good amount of pre-selected text that you could send to them and you could put your own but it's limited to that and you can't really put your own text unless you pull out your phone so yeah the notifications are, are pretty good and then over here is the next one this is going to be your weather it will tell you what it is like right now right now it's 88 degrees super hot in texas and then if you click on it further it'll tell you your forecast for the rest of the day over here just like that so this is a nice little feature uh, the weather app all right, and then the last one is going to be your calendars. You could connect your calendar to your watch and it'll give you notifications on your daily events or if, you're if, or if you have an appointment or whatever, whatever you set up on your calendar. And those are all the widget screens that you get. You just have to scroll up and down. This is not a touch screen. I know that other watches that Garmin makes are a touch screen, but this one is not a touch screen. Uh, you just have to use the buttons. And once you get used to it, I'm coming from a Vivo Active 4 and I was used to the touch screen. Uh, this one, once you get used to the buttons, you'll be going through these menus just like a pro. So if we press this upper right button, this is going to take you to a run and, and I'm a runner. I also do some weightlifting uh, for weightlifting. I used that before, but I didn't think it was too accurate on counting my reps or kind of predicting what I was working out. So I generally don't use it because I don't like to edit all that stuff after a workout. I just usually use the strength function for my rest periods. I just press the lap button so I could tie my rest so I could keep on working out. So that's why I like the manual lap function. So if we go to the run right here, you can see there is an options over here. So if we go to the options, you can see there, there is a run setting. So if we go to the run setting, you can see your data screens and you could actually put more data fields if you want to. So you could put whatever order you want. So you can have up to four data fields on your watch at one time and you can pick whatever you want on there too. So uh, that that's a good thing. And then you also have this training one. So you can put your own workouts on there using the Garmin app. See, I already put a lot of my 80-20 training on here. I have my foundation runs, fast finish six, uh, and you can have interval training. So you could edit what you want and set the interval. Right now it's set to a quarter mile interval with a minute and 30 rest and repeating it for five times. So uh, you could set it on your watch or you could also use the app and set it that way. But then you have Pace Pro plans. This is something that's only for the Forerunner series and up. It doesn't come with the Vivo Active and down. Uh, but this basically will give you your pace for a race. So you'll set what time you want and tell it if you want to do negative splits or positive splits and it'll tell you your pace that you should be going for each mile in order to get your goal so that's pretty cool i did not have that on the vivo active 4 and now i have it on this 400 245 with music all right so let's see how accurate the data is i compared it to the apex pro by koros pretty good watch pretty expensive watch too so the blue line is going to be the 245 with music and the purple is going to be the apex pro so you can see right here it's just getting kind of used to it uh, I, I, I couldn't say which one is more accurate really, but 
they're pretty much the same. The only thing that I see that is different is at the end where the Garmin has some peakings at the end where I was walking a little bit, so there was that. But other than that, the heart was pretty good. I would say if you are training with your heart rate, definitely get a chest heart rate monitor. All the companies make chest heart rate monitors, and that's really the best way if you're going to be really looking at your heart rate and training by that. Don't depend on your wrist, depend on something else that's uh, your chest heart rate monitor. So we'll look at the cadence. For this watch, the cadence is a little bit different. You can see that the Poros, it never dropped to zero. The Garmin definitely had a few drops. So there's a couple of drops over here for the cadence. But I think at the end of the day, the cadence over here was 73 for the Garmin and then 72 for the Coro, so really not much of a difference. So for elevation, the Garmin 245 does not have a barometer on there, so it's just using GPS data. The Coro does have one, so it's gonna be a lot more accurate than the Garmin, and you can see there is a big difference over here with the data for the elevation. So uh, definitely the Coro is gonna be better for the elevation because the Garmin does not have a barometer on it. And then we'll look at the GPS data and how close it was. So right here is where we started our run, over here. So the Garmin was on my left wrist and the Coros was on my right wrist. But still you can see, especially over here, so this there's a road over here. You can see they're both definitely not super accurate uh, when it comes to that. Uh, also, let's go to one where it wasn't an out and back. So you can see over here where we were on the sidewalk, uh, you know, there was a little bit I mean, they're pretty much the same. I, I wouldn't say that it, there's a huge difference in in them, but I think overall it measured the same distance at the end of the day. It did, they both measured 3.99 uh, GPS data. For me on these two watches and especially a Garmin or a Coros, they're gonna be pretty accurate. So they did both measure 3.99 and I had no issues with that. The only issues that we saw on this thing was really the barometer, the altitude, the Garmin does not have a barometer, so that was an issue with that. All right guys, so what is the price of this? Right now, it is on sale. It is running at $299 on the Garmin website, and it also is 250 bucks if you don't want the music. For me, music is good. You could have it, you could not have it. Uh, it does drain your battery a lot. So while it is good to have, I don't usually use it too much. So you could, you could save $50 and get it for $250 without music and you'll be just fine with that watch as well. So what are my pros and cons of this watch? Well, my pros are going to be the look of it. It's a good looking watch. I like how it looks. I like how it fits on the wrist. I like all the smart features that it has. Garmin has the best smart features out of any running watch out there other than Apple. Apple, of course, is gonna have a bunch of them. It has music, it has smart notifications that work really well. It has Find My Phone, a lot of other features on it. It has a robust app store as well. So definitely this is a good smart watch and also a good running watch. I also like Garmin Connect. I, I've been using that for many years and I put a lot of my 80-20 training plan on there and whenever you do start to run it'll tell you what your training is for the day so i like that as well so what are my cons i think one of the small cons is i wish it was a little bit bigger i do tend to like bigger watches but for a small watch like this one i think it works just fine my preference is for a bigger watch though Another con is the lack of a barometer. Uh, for people who are altitude training, you might want to look to a different watch because this one does not have a barometer and it won't be as accurate. It'll only be using your GPS data to try to estimate your altitude with that. Another con is going to be the battery life. You know, nowadays watches are getting long standby times. This one does have seven days, which is pretty good. So you just have to charge it once a week, but I do wish that it was longer. Some watches have 20 day battery life even longer. Uh, and also the 24 hours of GPS mode, it's good, but I also do wish it was longer as well, seeing that other watches nowadays have you know up to 50, 60 hours of GPS. So while 24 hours sounds good, it could be a lot better. So who is this watch for? I think that this watch is for those runners who are looking to upgrade from the first watch. So if you first bought you know a cheaper watch and you want more functions, more stuff, music, have longer battery life, all that, this is gonna be a watch that you're gonna be wanting to look for, probably a marathoner up to an ultra marathoner, looking to go 50 miles to 100K. Above that, you probably want to look at the Phoenix series of watches with longer battery life, longer GPS battery life. But that's who this watch is for. Serious or casual runner who's looking for a good watch, and this watch is one of those. So what I'm gonna give this is Goku Runner rating. I'm gonna give this watch a Goku Runner thumbs up. 
I've been wearing it. I think this is gonna be my daily driver from now on because I do test a lot of watches. I will have this on my wrist and I'll wear whatever watch I'm testing on my other wrist just so that I can have a watch at all times that is always on Strava because I've had issues with moving watches and not having all my data on Strava. So this is gonna be my new daily driver. I like this watch right now. It's 199, pretty good price, I think so. And uh, yeah, Goku Runner, thumbs up. And lastly, is this watch a good watch to buy in 2021? I gotta say yes, I gave it a Goku Runner thumbs up. I like this watch. It's a nice looking watch, fits well on the wrist. Does everything I need, music, smart watch capabilities, health stats, everything you need. I think this is a good watch to get in 2021. This watch has a lot of features for the price. It has a lot of features that the other more expensive watches has. Just probably just that battery life is lacking. But other than that, a good deal, especially for 2021. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this review of the Forerunner 245 music version. If you guys did, give me a like, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.